Good morning. We're going to look at uh, five psalms today, if we get, if we do, for sure. Psalm 89 through 93, combined yesterday and today's readings. And Psalm 89 uh, begins with uh, the first 18 verses are uh, praising God for his faithfulness to David, uh, remembering God's covenant. You know, verse 3, I have said I've made a covenant with my chosen one. You know, so th this person is writing this. It's attributed to Ethan, the Ezraite. Um, the person writing it remembers, uh, you know, God's covenant, God's promise to David and and uh, gives him praise that way. And then verse 12, you know, the, the, the north and the south, you created Tabor and Hermon, joyously praise your name. Tabor was a, a high mountain in the south of Palestine, and Hermon was the highest mountain in all of Syria. Yeah, Tabor was in the north, I think I said south. But but they were you know, the two majestic mountains that people looked up to. And, and the psalmist says that their majesty is nothing compared to God. And in verse 14, righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. And to think about that, righteousness and justice. I mean, I mean, the United States was founded, you know, the, the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, and, you know, and everything, you know, it, the intent is there, and the hope is there, and, you know, and then our uh, Pledge of Allegiance, you know, we we talk about liberty and justice for all, and, and there's some people that say, well, we don't have liberty and justice for all, so we can't say those words. Well, the ideal is that we would have. And so, yes, we need to pledge that. We need to talk about that because what better what better thing to have for a foundation than, than righteousness and justice or liberty and justice? I mean, it's just, this is what we need to build on and what we need to get back to. And so the, this psalmist is, is praising God because that's what he builds and bases his treatment, his attitude, his acceptance of you and me upon his faithfulness and his righteousness and his justice. And again, verse 20, um, you're talking about, uh, you know, God's covenant with David again. I have found my servant David. I've anointed him. And I mean, so again, this, this person is reminiscing about David and reminding himself and reminding God of the promise to David. And then when we get down into verses 38 and following, we find the, the root cause. Israel has, is again feeling shunned by God, left out by God, ignored by God because of their unfaithfulness. And Israel has been defeated and you have broken through the walls. You've laid his strongholds in ruins. I mean, they're crying out again for God to come and to save and to take care of them. Verse 47, remember how short my time is, you know, and asking God, remember us. Remember how short my time is. Restore your kingdom in my lifetime. And, and then verse 49 again, uh, the praise and acknowledging God, where is your steadfast love of old, your faithfulness, your sword of David? Reminding them that, that God's love is faithful, steadfast, and that, and that God chose David and that God had led the people. But it's a cry again, for God to come back or to let Israel back into his good graces, maybe, you know. Um, Psalm 90 is the beginning of book four of the Psalms. Um, and it's a, a psalm um, attributed to Moses. So, I mean, we're going from now, you know, Psalm 89 was was after King David. And now we're going back to a psalm of Moses, which was, you know, many, many, you know, generations before King David. And... Uh, the psalm is kind of broken out. It starts out, the first little bit is about God. Lord, you've been our dwelling place in all generations. And then verse 3 starts, it's about, about humankind and about our being finite. You know, you turn us back and you say, Dust, turn back, you mortals. And, and then uh, for a thousand years in your sight, you know, is like yesterday, you know. And so it's talking a little bit about God. And then verse 5, life Life on this earth it passes quickly. You sweep them away. They're like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. It flourishes, you know. And so it's, it's again, about humankind and our temporary time, the fleeting time that we have on this earth. And, you know, verse 7, we're consumed by your anger. Your wrath, we're overwhelmed. You've set our iniquities before us, our secret sins 
or in the light of your face, I mean, in your countenance. I mean, we can't get away from God's face. God's going to see us in, in all that we do. And then 13, verse 13 is, is that plea, Oh, Lord, how long? You know, turn back, remember us, desperate plea for, for God to take action. And then, you know, it says, make us glad. It says, let your work, let the favor of God. It's, you know, um, it's, you know, kind of a demand. It isn't, you know, please, Lord, hear us. It's make, you know, let, and it, it's saying to God, it's about time. You know, let's get going, you know, and so do it. Psalm 91 is the base for on eagle's wings. Uh, if you read it, you who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, Say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress and my God in whom I trust. And, and so we have, have those words of, of that song that is so familiar and so comforting. And, and we hear it you know, often at funerals, but also just as a part of our regular worship service. And then when we get to verse 11, we find the words, some of the words that Satan used in his temptation of Jesus. You know, he will command, you know, he says, Throw yourself off of the tower because he has given his angels command over you to guard you in all of your ways. On their hands, they will bear you up, you know. And, and again, those words are a part of on eagle's wings. But this is just a reminder to us that Satan used Hebrew scriptures in his temptations of Jesus. And, it, you know, he's twisting things around just like he did with Eve and Adam. Did God really say, you know, and... But these are some of the words that, that Satan used that way in his temptation of Jesus. And then verse 15, when they call upon me, I will answer. God is faithful. You know, God hears or, or pleas. You know, he says, I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them with long life. I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. And, you know, it's just a reminder, you know, that, you know, like the song on eagle's wings is that reassurance that, you know, that, that God is there, helping us through our tribals and, and toils on this earth. And, and just, you know, it ends, this psalm ends with, you know, with long life, I will satisfy them. This is God speaking, you know, that he will satisfy us and he will show them, you know, God will show us his salvation. He will welcome us into that place of eternity. Psalm 92 is a... a a prayer of thanks, basically giving to God. And, you know, um, I will declare your steadfast love. You did good to give thanks to the Lord. You have made me glad by your work. Um, and then, you know, how great are your works, O Lord? Again, I mean, when we think about the creation, when we think about the heavens and the earth and, and how birds can fly and fish can swim and live under the water and, 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 I mean, we can't live underwater because our lungs can't get the oxygen that we need. But, you know, you think about the, the majesty and the wonder of all creation, you know, and how, how, it's all, how it all comes together. And how, I think about, you know, like a, a whale or, a, you know, I mean, they need, they need to breathe air. You know, when they come up and they have the big, you know, the blowhole in there and everything, you know, but, you know, the the magnificence of creation and, and the, the, the wonders, you know, the wonders of creation. How great are your works, O Lord. Your thoughts are very deep, says the dullard cannot know. Well, I don't think we have to be a dullard, uh, an idiot, uh, to be able to, or to not to be able to understand all of God. He says, you know, the stupid cannot understand, you know, so much. But, but we need to just trust that God is there. He says, O oh Lord, you are, you are on high forever. And um, it goes that way. And I've got, I've got, I mean, just about every psalm in my Bible, I have some notes written. And in, in between Psalm 93 and 94, uh, so I'm assuming this is, you know, debate, uh, talking about Psalm 93, the righteous are planted in God's hand, you know, and that's, like verse, or in 92, rather, that they're talking about. Uh, it says, the righteous flourish like the palm and grow like a cedar. They are planted in the house of the Lord. You know, so we have our roots in God. I mean, when we get to Jeremiah, you know, as God says, I will plant my, I will put my word in their heart. You know, they will know me. You know, we our, our roots, our roots are in God. And because of, you know, his being a creator. 
Um, we're planted in house and we flourish. And in old age, we produce fruits. Um, you know, and it, it's just um, one of those wonderful things. I was just thinking about, okay, I got, I want to go back to, to Psalm 90 quickly. Um, because verse, verse 9, 10 are, are a couple verses that, again, sometimes you'll hear a pastor use at a funeral. For our days pass away under your wrath, our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are 70 years or perhaps 80 if we are strong. Even then their span is only toil and trouble. But we have so many people in today's world that are living to be 100 and, and beyond. And so the days of 70 and 80, um, you know, when, when someone dies in their 70s or early 80s, you know, we think that's kind of a short, short life in so many ways. Okay, just really briefly, just to look at Psalm 93, it is a, a hymn of praise to God. You know, just, you know, and, and just a reminder in verse 4 that, you know, God is more majestic than anything in all of creation. And and what can be better than a God who, who whose foundation of love for you and me is based upon righteousness and justice, and he looks upon us with grace and mercy every day.